Welcome to another Advent of Code walkthrough video. Today we'll be looking at 2022 Day 9. So Day 9. The rope bridge creaks as you walk along it. Okay, flavor text. You step carefully as you do, the rope stretch and twist. You decide to distract yourself by modeling rope physics and maybe you'll figure out where not to step. So a rope has a knot at each end. The knot marks the head and the tail of the rope. If the head moves far enough away from the tail, the tail will be pulled towards the head so the rope isn't stretchy. Um, due to some arbitrary reasoning, um, the, you can model the positions of the knots on a 2D grid, and following a hypothetical series of motions for the head, you can determine how the tail moves. And the rope is quite short, so the head and the tail must always be touching, so they have to be adjacent, including diagonals. And overlapping works as well. If the head is ever two steps directly in a cardinal direction of the tail, the tail will move one step in that direction to follow. And if they aren't touching and they uh, aren't in the same row or column, the tail will move one step diagonally to keep up. In other words, so um, if the if the head or the if the head is either two units above or below or to the left or to the right, and also one unit off in the other direction, so it is not directly above or below then the tail must move diagonally in the direction of the head. So in the following cases, we see that if the head is two above and one to the right of the tail, then because it is not directly in a cardinal direction, the tail will move one up and one to the right. Here the head is two, two to the right and one above, so it is technically in a different position. However, the tail still moves up one and to the right one. If the head were below and to the right and not touching, then the tail would move down and to the right by one. Now consider what happens if the head is here and the tail is here. Now this is not actually possible for the first part, but this will come in handy in the second part. And I'll get to that when we look at what that part entails. You just need to work out where the tail will go as the head follows a series of motions. Assume the head and the tail both start at the same position. So we can just consider that zero, zero, but it doesn't really matter. So for this series of motions, the head moves to the right four steps. So in the first movement, the head moves to the right, but the tail is still close enough. In the second movement, the head moves to the right, so the tail has to follow. And this continues four times. Then we move up four times. The first time, the tail is still close enough. The second time, the tail moves to the up and the right to follow. The third time and the fourth time, the tail keeps getting dragged up. As we move to the left, the first time, the head is still close enough. And then the subsequent two times, the tail gets dragged along, and so on and so forth. So let's grab this input and put it into our test file. And after simulating the rope, you count all the positions that the tail visited at least one. So we can keep track of these in a set. So let me grab my puzzle input. So you want to know what's the total number of positions that the tail visited at least once. Okay, so first, Let's keep a set of all of the visited locations. And it will start off including 0, 0. Oh, by the way, make sure you do not do this, because this is a tuple, and when you pass an iterable into the set constructor, it will unpack it. So this will actually be equivalent to this, which is just a set containing 0, which isn't what you want. So initially, the head is equal to 0, 0, and the tail is equal to 0, 0. Now we go through each line of input, so for line in open 0.read, oh sorry, just open 0, then we get the movement direction, d, and the distance, or change, let's call it, uh, let's just call these x, y, equals line dot split. And we want to turn y into an integer as well. So now we can start a loop to basically go in x direction y time. So for blank and range y, and then we'll go in the direction of x. So first we want to uh, convert x into the actual change in coordinates. So uh, right. So if x is equal to R, then we go to the right by 1, 
Otherwise, if x is equal to L, we go to the left by 1. And otherwise, the x value does not change if we aren't going right or left. Similarly, if we're going up, we want to change our y value by 1. If we're going down, we want to change our y value by negative 1. And if we're going to the right or the left, it doesn't change. So now we manipulate the position of h. So h0 is the x value plus equals dx and h1 plus equals dy. Now we need to check if the tail is too far away. So if the, so let's get the difference in x and the difference in y. So uh, I'll call them underscore x and underscore y. So underscore x is equal to the difference between the x value of the head and the x value of the tail. And likewise, underscore y is equal to the difference between the y value of the head and the y value of the tail. Now, under what condition does the tail need to move? It needs to move if the if uh, either the difference in x or the difference in y is two or more. So, if the absolute value of the difference in x is greater than one, or the absolute difference between y is greater than one, then we need to move. And by how much? So if underscore x is equal to 0, then they're along the same horizontal. So we only need to change um, the vertical. Oh, sorry, they're in the same column, so we only need to change the vertical. So um, h, sorry, tail, uh, the y value of the tail needs to change in the direction of y. Remember that the y value is the positive difference from the tail towards the head so the head minus the tail. So in order to move the tail closer to the head, we want to add underscore y. And since underscore y is equal to two here, then we divide it by two. Otherwise, if the y difference in zero is zero, then they're in the same row. And so we only need to change the x value by underscore x divided by two. Um, the reason I'm doing underscore x divided by two is because underscore x is either positive two or negative two. And so this is sort of equivalent to saying um, 1 if underscore x is greater than 0, else negative 1. In other words, move to the right if x is positive and move to the left if, if x is negative. But that's equivalent to just underscore x divided by 2. Otherwise, if, this, if neither of them are 0, then that means that we have to move diagonally. So in this case, uh, we change the x value of the tail by underscore x divided by 2. But the issue is that if we just do this, then if the underscore x difference is only 1, this will get rounded to 0, which isn't what we want. So instead, in this case, we're just going to go ahead and do 1 if underscore x is greater than 0, else negative 1. Because uh, underscore x could be negative 2, negative 1, 1, or 2. And we change the y value by the same amount by using underscore y instead. Finally, at the end, we just need to add the t value into the set. So v dot add tuple of t. Recall that sets cannot contain lists, so we have to convert it into a tuple. Uh, this is because Python sets use something called hashing, where you convert an object into a number. This just helps sets be more efficient. Uh, but you can't get the hash of a list because the values within a list might change. Tuples are immutable, so you can add them into sets. And now finally, we just need to get the length of this uh, set of visited points. And so that gives us our test answer of 13, which is correct, and our real output of 6,266. In the second part, OK, rope snaps, uh, a bunch of flavor text. OK, so using the same series of motions, but now you have the knots marked h to 9. So you now have 10 knots in your rope instead of just the head and the tail. And the motions work the exact same way, but with each uh, knot moving the one, bef uh, the one after it. More types of motion are possible than before. This is specifically referring to the fact that um, you might have the x and y difference both equal to 2. So we have a new test example now. So you need to uh, change the test input. The, uh, your actual puzzle input is always the same for both parts. OK. So 
essentially we're doing the exact same thing, but now we just need to repeat this movement checking step multiple times. So instead of a head and a tail, we'll now define our rope to be 10 zero zeros. The rope starts out with all of the knots overlapping. Do note that you cannot do this because this will create 10 copies of the same list instead of 10 unique lists. So let me demonstrate what the problem with that is. If I set the first value of the first list in A to 1, this will modify all of the lists. And if I append a value to the first list, it will get appended to all of them because they point to the exact same object. They are not copies of each other. OK. So now instead of the head and the tail, we have an entire rope. So we move the first uh, value of the rope by the specified amount in our puzzle input. And then we need to wrap this part into a loop, essentially. So for i in range 9, the head is now r i, and the tail is now r i plus 1. So basically, um, the reason I call it head and tail still is just so that I don't need to change anything in this part of the code, so that the variables h and t will still work fine. But h moves t in our previous part, so now each rope uh, knot moves the subsequent knot, starting from the first one and ending at moving the last one. And finally, instead of t, we add the last value of um, r. And so this should essentially work. Um, we get our test output of 36 and our puzzle output of 2369. So by engineering this part slightly intelligently and not doing anything particularly um, hyper-specific towards uh, just having a head and a tail, since the motions work the exact same way between uh, each adjacent pair of knots as with the first part, we were able to just simply wrap it into a loop and check every consecutive pair instead of needing to implement any new logic. And it just required a bit of adjustment, having 10 knots instead of a fixed head and tail. Uh, we just need to change a few lines of code and got the answer pretty easily like that. So this part was a bit difficult. You will notice from my ranking that I wasn't able to figure out the second part so easily. Uh, that is because I over-optimized, uh, sorry, over made the first part's solution a bit too specific, and so I wasn't able to port it over to the second part, and I got a bit confused with exactly how the motion was supposed to work. So that's all for today's video. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 10.